I sat the game sat in March for the eighth time, managed to get a score of... Hi guys, my name is Dylan. I'm currently a third year medical student studying in Sydney, Australia. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I got into medical school. My journey begins at the end of year 12. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I liked the sciences. I knew that maybe medicine, physiotherapy, pharmacy, I wasn't really sure, but I knew that I wanted to work in something to do with health. 2012, that was the year that I started my undergraduate degree in medical science at the Australian National University. 2013 was when I sat my first GAMSAT. I didn't do any study, paid my money, showed up on the day and did horribly. Failed section two, which is the written essay section, but an overall score of 51. But because I failed a section, I wasn't able to apply to any of the medical schools. And realistically, a score of 51 really wasn't competitive. But I wasn't that concerned, I had the next year, and also I had the September sitting. In September, I decided to do a little bit of study and I did manage to pass all of the sections. I got an overall score of 53. And I thought, well, for the next year, I'm really Really going to have to study, I'm really going to have to apply myself and in my final year of my undergraduate degree I'm going to get a great score in the GAMSAT, I'm going to go straight into medicine, the whole thing will take me seven years which isn't too bad considering the undergraduate degree takes people roughly five or six. That did not happen. Two thousand and fourteen. I think I ended up getting a score in the mid fifties, so third time sitting Gamsat. Then that I realised that I was going to have to sit the Gamsat again. It was then that I realised that I was going to have to do an honours year to improve my GPA, which also needed work. It was at that time that I realised that I really needed to get my together. Gamsat two thousand and fifteen. I got a score of fifty five. I sat again in September. I got a score of fifty five. Again not enough to get into medical school, and I knew I needed to ramp things up. A lot of people talk about GAMSAT scores. I'm sharing mine with you, not to brag, and I think by the fact that I've sat the GAMSAT eight times, I hope that it doesn't come across as bragging because it really did take me a long time to get the score that I got. Even then, it's not the greatest score. At the end of the day, I still got into medical school. If you're interested in what score I got, I will share that at the end with you. I really wanna make sure there's no one out there that is getting really disheartened by their GAMSAT scores and giving up because they don't think it's possible. Stay in there guys. Anyway, got to move on. So I thought it might be a nice idea to walk over to the place where I actually found out that I got into medical school. For those of you that have sat games at a few times, don't give up. It is possible. If I can do it, you can do it. And I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. Don't think you need to be exceptionally smart to study medicine or to get into medical school. It's more about hard work, really staying dedicated and just consistent. Studying consistently for the games that is definitely going to put you in a good stead in terms of studying for medicine once you get in. Keep it up. See if I can find a little spot to sit down that doesn't have mosquitoes. Okay, so in 2015, I was doing my honours research year. I was also working as a ward clerk. I got some exposure in the hospital and I also started working at Chris O'Brien Lifehouse as a theatre orderly or an operations assistant. Someone who helps out in the hospital, moving patients to and from the ward, getting bloods, just helping out the nurses and the doctors generally in theatres. All of those experiences definitely helped me to stay motivated, keep studying despite having already sat the GAMSAT five times. So I highly recommend anyone who is starting to get pretty over the GAMSAT and sick of studying for it, branch out and do things in the meantime that are going to be rewarding, that are going to keep you motivated and inspired. Just get involved as much as you can. Get a job in a pharmacy, in a hospital, at a medical practice, whatever you can do. It's definitely going to help you decide whether or not a career in medicine is for you. It's going to help you to get a better understanding of how the healthcare system works, some of the politics involved, and just get you a few contacts just so you have people that you know that are in the medical profession. And I reckon that you will benefit 100% by doing that. In 2016, I was finished my honours. I managed to get first class honours, which improved my GPA score very significantly. You are looking at improving your GPA. I definitely check that out and see if that's one way that you can improve your GPA score. When I did it, if you got first class honours in a honours research year, that was the equivalent of getting high distinctions for your final year of your undergraduate degree. And that can really bump up your GPA score. So if that's something that you're looking towards, it's something that you can do in one year. It's some research, which is great experience and it's something that a lot of medical students will be doing anyway as doctors and as medical students. Definitely good to get a bit of research experience under your belt. Now I'm going to tell you about 2000 and 
16. So I finished my honours year and I started working on my portfolio more. I did some volunteering with St John Ambulance and the Australian Red Cross. That was a great experience too and I continued those for quite a few years. They were definitely things that I could put in my portfolio. In 2016 I did sit the GAMSAT again and I think we're up to GAMSAT number... 2016 I sit the GAMSAT two more times, managed to get a 58 in March. I thought that that was kind of getting right on the cusp of some of the universities that I wanted to apply for. Probably wasn't competitive enough in hindsight, but I still threw my ball in the ring. I think that's the phrase. <laughs> my hope in the ring I have no idea anyway I put myself out there put it in an application wrote my portfolio and I submitted it a couple months later I got my rejection letter the letter of death as they say so I signed up for GAMSAT September 2016 to sit GAMSAT number seven getting that letter of death was definitely an eye-opener I realized that if I wanted to make this happen, I really needed to start studying differently because I was doing so much theory, learning formulas, but not really knowing how to apply them. And that was really silly in hindsight. But the September exam, I really started to study efficiently. And that was just by doing practice questions, writing practice essays, getting people to read them. And then if I got a question wrong, I'd go back and then I would look at the theory. So if anybody is studying for the GAMSAT, obviously I'm not an expert at the GAMSAT. I didn't get the highest score to get into medical school, but I have done it a lot of times and this is what worked for me. Hopefully this helps someone else. Do practice questions. 2016, I managed to get a score of 60, finally into the 60s. I thought I can use this score to apply for medical school, rewrote my portfolio, really improved that. And a lot of my experiences that I had done, they had been over a few years now. So it really showed continual volunteering. And that's something that they really care about in a portfolio. The last thing you wanna see is one-off trips overseas doing tokenistic or volunteer tourism type things. Although you can put them in there as long as you talk about them in a really honest way. 2017, I sat the GAMSAT in March for the eighth time and I finally managed to get a score of 64. Felt like I had finally got a score that was competitive that I could apply with. I thought that there was a good chance that I could get an interview and so I wrote my portfolio, really improved it and finally a couple of months later received an offer for an interview. Definitely applied myself. I asked friends that were already studying medicine to sit down with me. I asked them a hundred questions about their experience, what to expect on the day. I got them to do practice questions with me. I even suited up in my practice. So I was there in my living room, wearing a suit, sitting down, having my friends be blank faced, giving me nothing, no encouragement, no smiles, because I figured if I prepared for the worst and I prepared for a really grueling interview process, then I would be at least prepared as much as I could be for the day. And that definitely paid off. Some people say that you shouldn't study for or shouldn't practice for interviews because you're gonna come across as too rehearsed, but your best response often isn't going to be your first response to a question, especially like, why do you wanna study medicine? There's so many very cliched answers and you really need to understand why and be able to explain it in a very finite amount of time. So I think that any of those sorts of comments where people say don't prep, take with a grain of salt and also take any advice that anybody ever gives you about GAMSAT, medical school interviews, applying for medicine with a grain of salt. Find out what works for you and if it's not working for you, you need to address that and move on. Interview day came around, I had my suit on, which I'd worn in my living room, I showed up on the day and after the interview, I actually felt really good. Much to my relief after finishing the GAMSAT, and every single time finishing the GAMSAT, I never felt good. So don't feel bad if you don't feel good after seeing the GAMSAT. And also don't feel bad if you come out of the interview and you don't feel that great. You just can't tell. Now I'm going to take you to the spot where I found out that I got into medical school. Considering now I've almost finished my second year of medical school, I'm about to start third year, about to start clinical years. This is something really fun to do in my break. Hope you guys are enjoying it and I'll see you in the next spot. I love huskies. Definitely a dog person. I wish I could have a husky. Maybe one day. All right guys, so I'm currently just sitting outside of the lift where I actually found out that I got into med school. I had just been refreshing my phone like for two weeks. That morning, came down the lift, saw the notification, opened it up, boom. Congratulations, you've been accepted into medical school. Insane. First thing I did was I called my mum. She picked up the phone and I said, Mum, I finally did it. I got into medical school and she just cried. 
and maybe I cried too, but I will never admit that. Then I called my dad, also he was super proud. Once I got to work, all the nurses, all the doctors, all my fellow operations assistants, they had seen me apply to medical school the year before and not get in. They'd also heard how many times I'd sat the gam sat. When I got in there, they just saw me smiling and they're like, Dylan, did you get in, did you get in? I finally said, yeah guys, I did it, I finally did it and that was single-handedly the best day of my life so far. I think all the hard work, all those failed attempts, all just came into that one moment and effectively it just all made it worth it. That was, that's my med school journey. It's definitely a long one. It definitely wasn't easy. There's things that I could have done differently that maybe would have sped up the whole process, but I think overall, I'm really happy with what I've achieved. I'm really happy to currently now be in medical school. I've just finished my second year. I'm about to start third year. And I just hope that this video helps anyone that has maybe tried to get into medical school a few times or is thinking about it, but they're not sure that they're good enough. I hope that this shows that you don't have to be ridiculously smart to get into medical school. It does take a lot of work and dedication to both study for the GAMSAT, to prep your application, to study medicine in general, but it's definitely achievable. Um, it just takes a little bit of effort or a lot of effort <laughs> and you can definitely do it. If you've got this far, thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any questions at all, please just throw me a comment uh, in the comment section or send me a DM on Instagram. You can see my thing somewhere around here, wherever I can put it. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe. I'm gonna be making a bunch more videos about my experience in medical school, um, some tips and tricks on surviving medical school for the first two years and also just sharing my journey for the next two clinical years as well as life beyond medical school. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.